Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Betrayal at Krondor. In our last episode, we navigated the fearsome Mac Mordain Kadal and defeated the Brack Nur, and ended up with quite a bunch of uh, money and some better equipment. But now we need to continue our quest southward, escorting Gorath to the city of Krondor. Before we do that, I want to make one quick stop. We had just left the city of Lemute, and I'd like to go back into the city um, because we have to talk to somebody really fast. If you remember, we had spoken uh, with the guards of the barracks, and they had mentioned that um, a ruby had been stolen by a visiting great one named Makala. By some great, some great warriors had stolen that ruby. So let's go back into the inn, and we'll go ahead and uh, speak with Sumani. Sumani responded promptly. Shuffling closer, he pitched his voice so as not to disturb others that were drinking in the tavern. Your will, Lord. Let's ask him about the Grey Warriors. We were up at the garrison earlier, and they told us that a group of Grey Warriors stole a pair of rubies. Are the Grey Warriors some kind of special armed force on Kelowan? Special, yes, but not in the way you imagine. The Grey Warriors are men without honor. Men whose houses have been destroyed by an opponent house. Such men must live off the land until they die, though I have heard that Mara of the Akoma has accepted many such men into her estate. Others have learned they may be granted freedom if they can reach the kingdom. Many die trying. Where would such men go once they got here? Away from the mute, wherever they might go. Though the members of the garrison here are bound by kingdom law, many of the soldiers still live by Sarani custom, as I do. It is not easy to fight our feelings about the Grey Ones. If indeed these Grey Warriors have stolen rubies, I suggest you seek out a man with a tainted honor. Kiefer Aleskook in the town of L'Oreal. He is a gem merchant there, out of his home. Okay, so let's ask about the thefts. I get the feeling this ruby theft isn't an isolated incident. You listen between my words. This is the sixth such theft in the past year. Twice gems have been stolen near the assembly of magicians from the Great One Makala's entourage. That would be no simple feat to accomplish, even for a master thief. Whoever it is that is responsible, he must fear little if he doesn't fear the wrath of a great one. I would take care following this thief friend. I sense he is very dangerous. All right, so let's head out of here. I'm afraid it's time we did something other than sit around soaking up the atmosphere. Things to do. I am pleased you chose to visit the Blue Wheel Inn. It is my hope you will return again. I would say it's a definite possibility, assuming we're ever in Lemute again. Goodbye, Sumani. All right, let's head back out to the main uh, world here. Now, he mentioned that there's a gem merchant in the town of L'Oreal. So let's look at our overworld map here. We're here next to Lemute. Here was the mine that we... The mine's just down here, just south that's the town of Zun. And L'Oreal is way over here. Well, I don't want to go heading back north the way we came. That That's back towards the uh, Moradel country. So what we can do is we can head south and then take this road to the east through Hawk's Hollow, and then up around to L'Oreal. Why don't we go ahead and do that? And we'll see what uh, where the road takes us. That way we can go after this ruby and perhaps get a reward for it. All right, let's head back to the main road. We'll go ahead and reactivate the road following button, and we'll go ahead and just uh, follow the road as we go. Now here is the side path that takes us back over to the mines. Let's do a quick return to the mines, and I'll explain why in just a moment. I'll just go really fast here. We'll go ahead and skip through the dialogue there because we've already done that. We'll go ahead and light a torch really fast. It wouldn't do to be stumbling around in the dark down here. Once again, the same dwarf that we met before. We, we don't really have to have this conversation. We've already talked to him. We'll skip back through that. All right. The reason I've returned to the mines, very briefly, let's take a look at this map. We didn't explore everything here. If we head back south here, we're going to return to one of the big rooms that we explored here, right here. Notice there's a little bit of a doorway here on the right side of the room. We never went in there. 
There's a passageway right there that we never explored before. What could be in here? Well, it's a rather large room. I don't see any enemies, but I do see what looks like a box there on the far side of the room. Let's take a look. It's a chest, Gorath said. It appears to have a special lock on it. It's another Mordhell lock. A riddle for us to solve. Although my cow is dead, I continue to beat her. What a racket she makes. Hmm, it's a four-letter word. Although my cow is dead, I continue to beat her. Well, we have to think about this. Why would anybody be beating a cow after it's dead? Well, what do we do with cows after they're dead? Well, they, become, they can become food. Their hides can be used for things like leather, rugs, uh, saddles, clothing. It, why would you beat leather? Beat <gasps> Ah! Cow leather is sometimes used and stretched to form the skin of a drum. And inside we have Weed Walkers, which can affect the player's statistics somehow. Let's see how that works. Let's look at Gorath's statistics really quickly. His stealth just increased from 33 to 63%. He's going to be that much harder to detect. Well, that's exciting. Those are definitely worth picking up. Alright, let's head back out of the mine. Uh, and we'll head back uh, back to our quest. I just wanted to make that quick stop when I had realized, after recording the last episode, that we had skipped a small part of the mine. Um, but now we can head back out. Once again, we get accosted by that dwarf. <laughs> again, we can skip all of this nonsense. Alright, and we're back out of the mine. Let me go ahead and extinguish that torch. There we go. It's nighttime now, so let's go ahead and camp really quickly for the night. Okay. So this is as far south as we've been, and that means that there could be new enemies awaiting us. So let's take our time and be very careful as we go. Again, we want to go ahead and follow the map south to the town of Zun, and then that's when we're going to head east towards Hawks Hollow. Keep our eyes open for any potential uh, assassins or other enemies that might be on the road. They were being watched. Unsure where their observers were located, Locklear wheeled about just as a figure emerged from behind the trees. Ah, we were surprised by some enemies. Despite our best efforts. Okay, so Owen gets to go first. Notice that he can't cast because he's so close to this enemy. Now that Owen has a moment, I'm going to go ahead and cast... Let's cast Despair Thy Eyes, I think. Yeah, Despair Thy Eyes on uh, this enemy that they're both fighting. Try to get him out of the way as quickly as possible. One down. Owen is not a very good uh, melee combat uh, participant. But we won. 
Let's quickly search these bodies. Owen's melee ability has increased, so even though he didn't hit any enemies, just using his melee skill gave him more uh, more in that in that ability. It's gone up to 39%. Alright, the first body has a whetstone. I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Locklear hold that. And, and more armor. Oh, sorry. Let's see. It's better than any of the armor we have, so let's go ahead and give this to Locklear, since he's more of a frontline fighter. And a sword. It's better than the sword that Locklear is currently holding, so we'll definitely switch that out. And we'll use the whetstone on it. Notice it increased the durability, and by doing that, we're going to go ahead and continue to increase Locklear. You know, whoever uses the stone's ability in sharpening swords will increase. That's another skill you can learn, just like any other skill in this game. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and have him use it on the other sword as well. Because a better, um, a sharpen, a better durability sword will sell for more, and also I, I want to increase those skills. All right, that's everything on that body. Let's check the other body. Yep, the party's weapon craft ability has increased. When it doesn't just say one person, like Locklear's weapon craft, it says the party's weapon craft increased. That means more than one person's abilities increase. So both Lock Locklear went up to 59, Gorath up to 68. So as you can see, in this game, using skills is the key to increasing them. You want to do things. Here's some good rations. We'll go ahead and share that. Give one to each. Another sword and more armor. 79%. Uh, that's better than what Owen currently has, so let's go ahead and give that to Owen. There we are. Okay, successful battle. Let's take a look at everybody's hit points really fast. Grath, uh, everybody's back up to max hit, hit points, so we're in good shape. We'll continue along the road. And there's a town. This must be that town of Zun. So let's take a moment and uh, explore a little bit. The building's windows were shoddy. Even money says it's a tavern, Locklear said. You don't pay much for windows when you have to replace them often. The tavern keeper greeted them at the door. Guiding them inside to a cluster of tables, he produced a sheaf of papers which had been inked with the name of various goods and drinks, above which had been written the name of the tavern, the Green Cat. Quite something, eh? The townkeeper said in an obvious admiration. It's to become the fashion in all the taverns and inns, I hear. I believe the word for it is menu. Unfortunately, I won't have anything on it for quite a while. So, gents, can I get you a bit to eat? Sure. Cash up front, if you don't mind, he said, rubbing his fingers together. So we can go ahead and buy food if we need it, but we don't, so we won't. So that's not a tavern we can actually go inside and talk to people. It's just a place to get food. The door swung open. Bleary-eyed and smelling of alcohol, a fortyish looking man sneered at them. Well, what do you want? he shouted. Out with it! Uh, we were hoping you could give us directions. Directions? Directions? The man's eyes blazed as he snared a wine bottle from the floor. I'll give you directions! Before Lockler could react, he felt the impact of the wine bottle against his skull. Well, his stamina is low. I, I don't think it actually affected his health, but what the heck? Locklear pounded on the door. No one answered. Resigned that the drunk wasn't going to face them down in a fair fight, he shrugged and turned his back. I don't guess he's going to answer it now, he said, touching a tender spot on his head. Let's go on. Okay, let's try the next house. Let's try this one first. Locklear knocked on the door of the small wooden house, then waited patiently for someone to answer. After several seconds, a woman appeared and ushered them inside. I don't have time to talk unless it's really important, sirs. I have to finish preparing some mushrooms that I picked for the shopkeeper over at Keiki's. He nearly ran out of healing restoratives yesterday, and you know what they say. You can kill me, but you can't eat me. That's a strange expression, Owen said. What does it mean? To tell the truth, I don't know, the woman replied, her face brightening with a wide grin. It was something the Baron Kevin used to say. Never could make any sense out of it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really must be running along. Okay, and they don't answer again. What about this house? Luckily, knocked on the door. For a long moment, he leaned against the doorframe as he waited, positioning himself so he could listen for the sounds of any stirrings inside. When at last it was evident that no one was coming, he stepped back with a shrug. Doesn't seem that anyone's about, Locklear said. OK, 
Okay, and lastly, this house. The place is abandoned, Gorath said, looking around the room. Maybe the occupants left something behind that we can use. Let's have a look. And there's a little bit of money and what looks like a bowstring. A light bowstring. All right, and that's the small town of... Oh, and there's a little shack over here. A bell rang. No sooner had Locklear managed to get the door open than he found the shopkeeper was escorting him inside. There's Kege's herbs. I'm seeing if there's anything we can do other than buy or sell in here. Nope, just buying and selling. So, herbal packs... I haven't... I don't know if I've shown that before. But you can use it um, to help people heal at a faster rate. We already have quite a few of that, though, so... Sorry. And other items that are usually uh, basically buffs, things that can increase... Clerical oil cloth, for example, you can use on your sword um, to increase their abilities. Restoratives are basically the equivalent of health potions. Uh, they will come in handy later, but I'm not going to buy any right now. We've already got a couple of them. Okay, but at least we know that there's a good shop where we can buy healing items if we need to um, in the future. All right, so that's the small town there of, uh, I believe that's the town of Zun. You can see her right on top of Zun, yeah. Just a small little village. One thing we might we might want to do before we leave is kind of wander around the back of some of these uh, houses and just look behind them. Occasionally you'll see something buried in the ground, but I don't see anything, so let's continue on our way. We're going to look for, there should be a path leading to the west uh, fairly soon. But it looks like night's falling, so let's go ahead and set up camp. Oh, you know what? I, I just realized. I'm sorry. Health and stamina are combined um, to basically make up your hit points. So that, that lost stamina does affect your health. So we want to definitely rest and heal up a little bit there. There we go. We got to keep an eye on that. All right, so here's where the road curves to the east, so we can go ahead and start heading to that uh, other town to look for that, to talk to that guy about that ruby. Oh, and I see enemies ahead. We should be able to get the drop on them since we see them. They agreed to attack, going over the plan as quickly as possible. Locklear laid out a simple strategy. We're set then, he said. Let's just hope our advance is undetected or our advantage will be lost. The enemy was not surprised. In fact, they seemed eager to accept the challenge and move forward to meet the failed charge. Weapons at ready, shouted Locklear. Looks like we're going to fight this one on their terms. All right, three enemies this time. Owen, what can you do to help us out here? Let's go ahead and blind one of them. Uh, the one right here in the middle. And Locklear, take him out. We missed. Gorath, stop this guy from attacking Owen. Ooh, so far, no good. Let's also cast on this guy. Ooh, they're coming after uh, Owen. I meant to attack this guy, but I clicked on the wrong space. One is down. Now I can engage this guy who keeps trying to attack Owen. So first things first, I'm going to attack this guy. And then Owen's going to try to back off. And Locklear's going to attack this guy to keep him from attacking Owen. I want to double team so we can kill these guys as quickly as possible. Oh, I didn't mean to run in. I think we'll be okay. Between the three of us, we should have this guy down pretty quickly. And you know what? This practice will help with Owen. The guy's actually fleeing. And Owen got a couple hits off, so that's actually good. 
Because remember, this all increases his melee skill every time he gets hit. And Owen got the kill! Look at that! And they're all down. The party's abilities have increased. Let's uh, take a quick look. Locklear's defense went up. And Gorath's accuracy melee. That's very useful. All right, but we've got three bodies to search. Let's see what we've got here. More armor. Don't really have room to carry more armor, but... We'll grab it, and if, and if we need to make room, we can always dispose of other stuff. Poisoned rations. Let's not take those. We don't want to suddenly die. Good rations. We'll go ahead and spread those amongst the party. Some more money. Kind of garbage sword and garbage armor, but... We can increase our uh, weaponsmithing by uh, doing that. Okay, well, looks like we're out of room. Honestly, what we should do is quickly head back to Lemute. Uh, you know what? Never mind. We'll continue on our way to Hawk's Hollow. That was the next town. Um, I'd like to take a look at everybody's hit points, though, really fast. Let's go ahead and rest for the night. That way everybody but Owen is in really good shape. Oh, and look, a temple. Let's take a look at this. Incense swirled. Striding between the columns of the temple, Locklear made for the heavy wooden doors which had been sealed against the daylight and which preserved the privacy of any ceremonies in progress. Pulling a tasseled rope which hung next to the door, he awaited the response of the door warden. The meditation chamber was spartan and strangely cold, seeming all the colder for the heatless flame which burned in the holy censer. The only bow, bow, excuse me, the only bow that had been made to adornment of the temple appeared to be the strange pattern that had been etched upon the wall. So let's look around. We can look at the, at the fire. The fire was cold. Unnerved by the unnatural flame, Locklear decided to explore elsewhere. Locklear pulled the curtains aside. The rear section of the temple was as dramatic as was the meditation chamber. A large pool occupied the center of a lush courtyard and was hemmed in on all sides by an alabaster peristyle with climbing vines. Cloistered immediately off the open area were several arches. Doorways either blocked by heavy woven, woven curtains or choked with clouds of obscuring incense. Nearby a gong sounded and immediately a priest hurried out of a doorway, halting as he caught sight of the unexpected supplicants. So let's talk real quick. They were shown to a chamber. Here there were no flagstones or chipped tiles underneath their feet, but instead a thick carpet of grass jeweled with dew. At the far end of the room a pair of yew trees overarched a throne of woven reed upon which was seated a striking-looking woman, her shoulder-length black hair bound behind her back with a green cord. "'I am the high priestess of the temple,' she said, musically. "'Killian welcomes you to her domain. Come, be seated.' Listening with keen interest to the stories told by Locklear, the priestess remained as motionless as a statue. At last, she folded her hands in her lap and sighed heavily. "'That was most entertaining,' she said. "'I particularly liked the part about the drunk.' But I would advise you in the future to keep an eye on the food you eat. You shouldn't simply gulp down the first thing you find without taking a look at it first. Properly chastened, Luckler shrugged his shoulders and promised he'd be more careful in the future. Cheered, he didn't mind when the high priestess escorted them from the room. So here we could actually cure our wounds or get blessings. Let's go ahead and click on that. The priest shrugged. There's nothing wrong with you that I may mend, he said at last. Your wounds will heal themselves with time or may be mended by a churgeon. But I can only heal those things of a spiritual nature. There is no curse upon you, nor has Lim's Kragma marked you to come soon to her halls. You shall survive without assistance. As far as blessings, Locklear searched his pack. Which of your items would you like blessed today, a priest asked, and we could actually bless our items to make them more effective. But we're not going to do that right now. So, The priest bid them farewell. Leaving the lushness of the central courtyard, they passed back through the curtains into the deserted meditation chamber. So there's this other item here, this thing on the wall. The design was odd. I see the mandala interests you. Turning, Locklear noticed a thin young man standing in the archway, his hands hidden in the folds of his robe. While the relations between the temples and the new Academy of Magic at Stardock have been cool, it is one of the treasures they have passed on of the Sarani magic. It has given us great mobility. Mobility, Locklear asked. How can a painting help you move? The acolyte smiled. It would be easier to explain by example. Tell me about a place you're familiar with, a place where you've spent a great deal of your time. 
Locklear shrugged, describing a place he had grown up, the layout of the rooms, the various things associated with his home. Very good, the man replied. As you described those things to me, doubtless you also experienced certain memories through which you were able to relive your past. In the same way, these mandalas help us locate a place. By, by memorizing a pattern painted on the wall of a specific temple, we may will ourselves there. I could think my way home with this? No, the memory of your home would be too unfocused for you to make the attempt. But if you were to memorize this pattern, you could return here by recalling its image in your mind when assisted by the power of another temple. Locklear looked back at the mandala, lost in thought for a moment, his eyes soaking up the intricacies of it. I assume there would be some fee associated with moving between locations. The acolyte nodded. As simple as it is in concept, it still requires a great deal of effort to move even a single individual, though I am told the Sarani Great Ones move about with less effort. I believe Pug wished to restrict our knowledge of this in some ways until we had proven we would not abuse its power. A bell sounded. Abruptly, a darkly robed priest swept into the room and came to halt behind Locklear. I was alerted that you might desire to use the mandala. A desire, perhaps, but I haven't seen any of the other symbols, Locklear said. I don't suppose you could go with us. I am regretful that I cannot assist you, the priest said. My duties require I stay here to guide others that wish to arrive. I am sorry. So what that means is, in the future, when we visit other temples and we look at them, now we've, we have this mandala in mind, we can teleport back here. These are like fast travel locations. The temples throughout the land will be, will be fast travel that we can go to. We can travel between them, excuse me, more easily. So let's look at our map really quickly. I don't believe the temple shows up on our map, but um, so we could travel from here to any other temple and vice versa. Let's go ahead and continue our uh, journey. All right, there's a little uh, path here. Let's see where that goes. Ah, looks like somebody camped here. You can see some campfires left behind. But over here, looks like somebody left a box. has a special lock. That must be another mortal word lock. Let's see if we can figure this one out. When it comes in from sea to shore, 20 paces you'll see. No less, no more. Well, this three letters, this one seems pretty obvious to me. What comes in from the sea and makes you unable to see? Something that obscures your vision? Well, that would almost certainly be fog. And that's right. Let's go ahead and steal the money. Take the lock picks. I'll just give them all the lock lear. And another sword. If we can make it to that town of Hawk's Hollow, we should be able to sell all this for a pretty hefty profit. Alright, and back to the road. Let's see how far we have to go before we get to that town. We're about halfway there. Okay, we're not it's not too far at all. Here's another, another, uh, path leading off. Looks like there's a fence here. Oh, a little house. A shop of some kind. Locklear gasped. Severed heads spun in gray space before him as disembodied arms and legs flailed together with a sound, much like the clashing of kitchen scullery? Looking closer, he realized the body parts were not, in fact, body parts, but instead very tarnished pieces of armor that had been suspended from the shop's rafters. You there, careful! It may all come down on your heads! A gnomish man approached from the rear of the shop, a match held tight between his fingers. Should have knocked. Nearly didn't hear you from upstairs. I can see why you came in, though. Your armor's in quite a state. Another blow to your suit and you'll look like those lot up there. I'll fix you right up. If it's all the same, I prefer to buy an armorer's hammer. I'm sure you would, but I'm not in the business of ruining my livelihood. I'm an armorer, and I make my living in repairs. People go fixing their own, and I'm out of business, right? So, Joseph the Animals. He lets us repair armor. That's pretty much, I think, all we can do here. We can't buy or sell. So, if we wanted to, we could repair things. So, for example, this armor, 84%. He could do it for 5 But he won't do it for swords. He only does armor. What about elvish armor? No, that's going to cost 84 sovereigns. I, I don't feel like doing that today. 
Anyway, I'm not actually going to take advantage of this today, but um, it's good to know that there's a repair shop if we need it. Let's quickly rest until daytime. Owen's feeling much better now. And let's head back to the main road. <laughs> so as you can see, there's all kinds of different shops located throughout the kingdom. There's temples, repair shops, healers, you know, different things. And as we explore, we're going to run into all of those. Here's another little path leading off. Let's see if this is helpful or harmful. I don't see anything. Let's leave the path for a moment and explore over here. I don't see anything here worth exploring, but okay. Sometimes there's just dead ends. Let's continue. We should be coming up on the town any moment now. Hopefully there's no other enemies waiting for us between there and the town. Let's check our map again. We're almost right on top of it. It's possible. Let's zoom out a bit. I'm not seeing the town. Could this lead to the town? No, another dead end. And I don't see anything in the trees. No, just another dead end. Another way for us to waste our time, it looks like. <laughs> But you want to explore these because, you know, there's all... Oh! I saw that enemy standing there just at the last moment, and I didn't stop to click on it. We've wandered into a battle. But luckily they're far enough out that they won't be able to advance to us in the first turn. Let's go ahead and blind this closest one. Allow Locklear and Gorath to try to get the drop on them. I'll move Owen up a little bit. I can't. I don't have enough movement to get to this guy, so Gorath's just going to attack this one. Owen will assist. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. It's very easy to click on the wrong spot if you're not paying attention. Oh, he's fleeing. Get him, Owen, get him! You missed. So since he's fleeing, um, let's use our, um, oh, I'm too close to him to use my crossbow. I'm going to move one step away. Ah, he was able to flee. Unfortunate. Hopefully this one will not be as, as successful. Grass defense ability increase. That's good. Uh, once again, some more rations. We can always use those. We'll share them amongst the party. Some good money. One sovereign and 18 royals. I don't think we have enough room for more armor to carry. Let's see if we have any armor. That's, we, this armor is worse, so we'll put that there and take the 65. Now we'll just grab the sword. I think Owen can still carry it. There we are. Let's continue on our way. Night night is falling, so we're going to quickly uh, rest again. And we should be on top of the town. There it is. There's the marker for that town. I just... There it is. Let's look at that marker. Hawk's Hollow. Excellent. Locklear pushed the door open. As he passed through, he noted the lack of a door latch, a sign the inn was likely chartered by the local lord to ensure the safety of travelers. Hopefully it would also mean the inn's furnishing would be suitable. The Dusty Dwarf Inn. This is the very same thing that happened when we were at the Sarani Inn. We already saw this part. Sometimes there's just a drunk guy who talks to you. Let's talk to the innkeeper. So what we can do is we can pay money, um... And we can rest for the night and get some good healing. But we don't need that right now. 
Locklear tapped the woman's shoulder. Slowly, she turned to look at him, but rather than greeting him with a smile, in her gaze was a look he had thought reserved only for things that crawled on the ground or lapped up table leavings, leavings in the dooryard. What do you want? I was hoping perhaps we could talk, Locklear ventured. Pass the time with a little conversation. Why? She said curtly. Opening his mouth to reply, but suddenly finding himself bereft of adequate speech, he made a small sound which he was certain sounded quite unmanly. Stabbing him with her exquisitely beautiful stare, she smiled. I thought as much. Goodbye, sir. I am sure you have a brilliant oratory career before you. And in the bar from the barmaid, we could buy more food if we needed it, which we don't. All right, well, that's the end. But before we leave... We are terrible at music. <laughs> but by doing that, we can gain a little bit more experience in barding. Eventually, we can buy our own loot and use that to practice with. All right, so first things first, let's take a look at some of these houses. Hopefully, we can find a, um, a shop where we can sell off all this weapons and armor that we've gotten. A man invited them inside. Come in, my name's Lucan, he introduced himself as he slapped his guests on the backs. Nice to meet you. I haven't had visitors in some while. You know, it gets kind of lonely up here, and the kids don't come down too often. You have kids? They're a marvel, don't you think? And Locklear seized Lucan's wrist and gave it a savage twist, forcing a shiny sovereign to fall from the man's pained fingers. Everyone watched in shocked silence as the gold clattered to the floor. I almost didn't feel you nabbing that for my purse, Locklear said. You're not a bad thief, but not good enough. Don't kill me, Lucan pleaded. Please, I don't have anything to give you, but, but I'll do anything. I I'll teach you. You'll what? Goroth spotted. I'll teach you. Yes, that's it, Lucan said, his face brightening. Spare my life, and I'll teach you what I know about locks. Everything. What do you say? Sure, why not? <laughs> Locklear arched an eyebrow. Very well, Lucan, he said. You may teach us, but if we leave here with any less than we came in with... No, 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 you have my word. Just sit here. I'll be right back. I'll go and fetch my practice locks, and I'll be right back. Nice try, but no, you're staying here. Locklear pushed Lucan to a seated position. Just tell Gorath where your practice locks are, and he'll fetch them. Then we'll start our lessons. Having resigned himself to the fact that he wasn't going to escape, Lucan lectured and demonstrated for the better part of the day before he set his practice locks aside. That's it, he mumbled, wiping perspiration from his brow. That's all I know. Good enough, Luckler said. I think we'll be on our way now. And Lucan, for your continued health, I suggest that you get out of the thieving business. The party's abilities have increased. Nice. So by visiting that house, we basically gained increases in lockpicking. Locklear's up to 32, Owen's up to 10, and Gorath is 20. So Locklear's still our best, um, but that's pretty great. Oh, hang on. I need to actually head to the, the other house. So I can, let me get off the road. Sorry. I'm getting a little turned around here. That's the inn. That's Lucan's house. And then there's this house here. Locklear knocked on the door of the small house, and after several minutes, an angry woman appeared at the window and began to scream at them. Keep your bloody sovereigns! I've decided I'm not leaving! Why should we want you to leave? I refuse, you hear me? I refuse! Now go away! That's interesting. Okay. Let's, it's getting a little dark, so it's hard to see where we're going, so let's quickly camp for the night. Again, we can gain back more health that way. What's this large building? Almost looks like a temple or a church or a barn. Locklear pushed the door open. Looks like an abandoned tavern, Gorath said, looking around the room. Maybe the former owners left something behind we can use. Spoiled rations. And good rations. Um, I'll give them all to Locklear, but... These I'll share with the party. Looks like, uh, oh, okay, you can only hold up to a certain amount. That's right. I'd like to give some of these to Gorath. At least give, like, you know, three of those to Gorath. That way, Gorath has nine. They both have 11 and nine. That's much better. We'll leave the spoiled rations behind. Okay. This looks like a shop here. The Woolen Man. The lay of the goods store was comfortably familiar, arranged in such a common-sense fashion that it took only a few moments for Locklear to locate the items which interested him. So we can buy and sell. Is there anything else like repair? No, just buy and sell. Before we do anything else, let's sell everything we have. Um, switch that out. 
Let's sell off these other swords. Ah, uh, he won't buy them. No. This guy doesn't like our armor. It's not good enough for him. That's a shame. We'll find a place to sell it soon enough. So what does he sell? Well, there's the Amulet of the Upright Man. Locklear looked at the medallion skeptically. In Crondor, similar amulets were sold as fool's trinkets, ornaments that seemed in all respects like true gold, but were clever fakes run up by unscrupulous magicians. Checking the reverse side, he noticed an inscription to Banath, the god of luck and of thieves. You can buy emeralds, rubies, shells. You can also buy some keys, though, which could come in handy later, knowing that there's a place we can come to buy keys if we need some. But that's all we can do in the shop for now. Unfortunately, he won't buy our weapons and armor. What about this last house here in the corner? A door opened a fraction of an inch. Your hands, a voice commanded. Pardon? What did he say, Locklear said? Show me your hands, the voice repeated from the darkness. Palms up, thumb out, and don't make any sudden moves. Faintly amused, Locklear complied and did his ass, extending both his hands for the stranger's examination. On command, he turned his hands over, again waiting for the judgment of the voice in the house. You pass, the voice in the house pronounced at last, but his voice did not sound relieved. All right, then. Listen carefully and don't ask any questions. What was that hand business about? I said no questions, the voice snapped. Suffice to say, I know that you can be trusted with what I have to say because you don't bear the sign. You should be on the lookout for scrolls or anyone bearing scrolls. Read them carefully. They could save your life. Be safe. Scrolls, Locklear asked. Why? What's on these scrolls? Does it have anything? Abruptly, the door slammed shut. Okay, well, that was interesting. Well, that was a sort of an interesting visit to Hawk's Hollow. <laughs> Let's check our map now and see where we are. So we've just passed through the town of Hawk's Hollow. It looks like in just a moment, the road is going to branch to the left, heading back north to the town of L'Oreal. And that's where we're going to have to go to meet up with that gem merchant or that gem trafficker. I forget what he said the guy was. Um who may know something about that stolen ruby. So that's what we're going to have to do next. After that, our path is pretty open. We could go back to the main road that we were on towards Quester's View, eventually down to Sarth and all of that, and eventually to Crondor, or we could take some of these other roads. Probably don't want to head all the way out here, though. You know, it looks like our next thing we're going to do is head north to L'Oreal, so we can go ahead and continue this quest for the stolen ruby. But for now, we're out of time for today. In our next episode, we're heading north to the town of L'Oreal to continue the quest for the stolen ruby. I'll see you then.